Hello everyone, this is instructor Muriel Howard and we will be breaking down coding cases, week one, musculoskeletal system, and we will be covering chapter eight of the next step, but we are also covering the week one coding assessment in BC 3030. Here are some items that you will need before getting started a copy of the week one coding test. This can be printed by going to weekly materials, week one, reading materials, and then coding assessment. You also need a CPT manual and your ICD-9 as I will be going over the important things to highlight and what to look for and um, what you guys can do is as I'm speaking pause the recording, go into your ICD-9 or CPT, and locate your terms as I go along. Um, you also need highlighters. It's important to highlight the important things throughout the case as you're abstracting information. And a diagram of the musculoskeletal system, just in case you are seeing some terms that you're not familiar with or some anatomy that you're not familiar with and you would like to look that up, it's important to have a diagram available. What's helpful is to have your Next Step textbook. Um, that textbook does have plenty of diagrams, but I also suggest having a copy of the step-by-step -step textbook as well. Here are some help helpful diagrams. One is of the muscular system and the other is the skeletal system. They are two separate systems, but we build and code them accordingly as they are one. Um, so you would have to pull two diagrams. What I did was I just googled musculoskeletal diagram and I was able to locate one for the muscular system here and one for the skeletal system here and as you can see it goes from the cranium to the feet metatarsals the anterior and the posterior view and these are always helpful to have just in case um, even in the future when you're done with school um, just to make sure you have a good grasp on anatomy and medical terminology and as you can see I have a similar one anterior and posterior for the muscular system. Okay, so we're going to get started with our breaking down coding cases. Okay, so we're going to begin with number one and this is also um, the same as your coding test for week one, although my numbers that I work on may be a little bit different or out of order than yours, but it's the same information. Um, I am going to begin reviewing with the question. What is it asking us for? What are we needing to do in this particular scenario? Um, there are times when you're just going to do ICD-9 like this one, and then there are times that it's just going to ask for the modifier. So it's always important to go back and look at the actual question before attempting to do anything else. Okay, so it's asking us for the diagnosis or the ICD-9 and that can be located right in the heading one of the heading lines I always say that you can pull as much information needed to code the complete scenario just from the four or five lines in the heading so that's a little hint and something to remember jot that down and in this scenario the patient has right carpal tunnel syndrome and how we would locate that in the ICD-9 is our main term in volume 1 is syndrome and the type is carpal tunnel and that's it even though it's telling us that it's the right side that's not important when you're dealing with diagnosis coding for ICD-9 um, but it will be important for ICD-10 which is 
possibly a year from now. Just a little sidebar note right there. Okay, so that's all we're needing for number one. So this one should be really easy. The only thing is you have to assure that you are cross-referencing with volume one to assure that you are pulling your code to the highest level of specificity. Okay, number two. Let's see what we're gonna do here. All right, and I just highlight that. I always have a habit of highlighting my location. Um, it's asking us for our CPT code and also our modifier. So it's telling us that we will need a modifier in this scenario. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is break this up a little bit so that I can make sure that um, I have everything clarified. We have the procedure performed, which is one of the lines in a heading, as I've said before. Right carpal tunnel release. Our main term for this is release, and that's in the CPT index, and the type or where is carpal tunnel. When you're dealing with CPT coding, it's important to know what happened and where. So number one, a release was done. Number two, in the carpal tunnel or inside of the hands and fingers. As far as our modifier is concerned, when you're dealing with CPT coding, especially with fractures, and things that are um, in the musculoskeletal system, what the insurance company would like to know is the side of the body. So your modifier would just basically be that it happened on the right side of the body, so you need your modifier to indicate that. And um, this is important just in case the patient comes back in a week and have the same thing down on the left, the insurance company will know that these are two separate body parts that were worked on. Okay, so we are done with number one and number two. Moving on to number three. Outpatient hospital again. This is telling us here that we need three diagnosis codes. So in this case, I don't even have to worry about anything that happened in the procedure because that's what's that's not what we're coding right now. Okay, for the first two ICD-9s, wait a minute, let me fix this. I wasn't supposed to do that there. The f um, for the first two ICD-9s, I'm going to break this up a little bit. We have a preoperative and postoperative diagnosis, which are one and the same. Usually the preoperative diagnosis will be a little different than the postoperative diagnosis if the perhaps the provider locates a more definitive diagnosis as he's doing his surgeries or his procedures or diagnostic testing. So that's a sidebar note right there. Okay, so we have fracture. Well, I'm going to eliminate the preoperative diagnosis. Postoperative diagnosis is what's important. Fracture of C1 and C2. Even though there's one line with the diagnosis telling us that we have a fracture in it appears to be one area, we need to know that your cervical spine or your spine is divided into four segments. We have a cervical, we have thoracic, we have lumbar, and last but not least, we have sacrum. I wanted to make sure I spelled that correctly. Okay, and so for the cervical, we have um, several vertebrae in there, and the ones that were affected by this fracture is the cervical vertebrae one, number one, And the 
fracture of the vertebrae. There may be a couple of different ways that you can locate these codes, but the important thing is to go to the word fracture and the place that it happened was the vertebra or vertebrae and the portion of the vertebrae was cervical. So you would have one code for C1 and one code for C2. Okay, so now we're going to focus on the E code. The indication area is where they have decided to post or comment how the fracture occurred. Fracture occurred when the patient was involved in a unspecified motor vehicle collision. So there is a few ways to locate this e-code, but the one place that I always say go to is when you get to the area right after your table of drugs and chemicals, you will see the index of external causes. In there, you can go to the word accident or collision and the type is what well, I'm going to say accident or collision and the type is motor vehicle okay so what's important here is that the patient was the driver and this is our fifth digit sorry so once you find your initial E code inside of your index for external causes, you will cross-reference that at the back of the ICD-9 volume 1 and you will go behind the 9s and behind the Vs, you will see the index, the numerical index for your E codes. You will take the E code that you were referenced from volume 2 cross-reference it in volume 1 and you will see some tables that has uh, the fifth digit indicating which patient or, or what position in the car the patient was. You have I believe 0 through 6 or 0 through 8 for this particular one and um, one of those indicate that the patient was the, page, the, was the driver. I'm sorry getting a little tongue-tied with that one and that should be your appropriate fifth digit okay so that one is cleared up now we are in number four and I don't know why I just did that let me undo let's try to do something a little different highlighting it okay so this one we're just needing our CPT code for the same scenario that was in number three and that means I don't need any information related to the diagnosis where I can find the information for the procedure performed is the heading procedure performed placement of a halo for this when you're dealing with um, this particular one it's really easy the main term in the CPT index is halo and the type is cranial if you pay attention to the week one regular TNS lecture that I sent out I show uh, a picture of what a halo looks like it's an external fixation device to um, allow the body to mend and heal when there is um, an event of a fracture so there's a, a halo placed on the patient's head cranial and there are some pins and, and needles or pins are applied to keep or screws to keep the uh, halo in place until the patient um, has healed properly okay so that's all we need for that and our fifth and final one let me go this route so I don't mess it up again our fifth and final one for this one I have decided to do the ICD-9 and the CPT even though your number five may only be asking for the ICD-9 but I'm going to talk about CPT as well and I believe we need a modifier if I could 
type. Okay, so for this one, let's start with the ICD-9. And remember, that can be found within the first five sentences. Right here, the patient has a preoperative and postoperative diagnosis of osteoarthritis of the left knee. That is our main or our search term. And the location is knee. I don't know why I can't type today. Okay, so when you are looking for the osteoarthritis in volume two, you get your codes. You would cross-reference it in volume one. You may run into a table to um, basically ask you to pull your fourth and or fifth digit. On that, because the knee is a joint, you may see lower limb or lower extremity. I don't have my book open. Another term is patella. So, so it's good to have your diagram when you run into instances where you may not find the actual word, but it may give you the medical term and you want to see where it is. That's when it's, you know, the diagrams become really helpful. So we pulled, or we have our information for our ICD-9 and the services that were rendered, left knee arthroplasty. Our main term is arthroplasty. That's what was done and the where is the knee. When you get to the index in the CPT, you will go to the word arthroplasty and you will see a list alphabetically beginning with ankle and you just go over until you find the word knee. Now in this case, um, they have regular and they also have revision. So make sure that you are pulling the code for arthroplasty knee and the type is total not partial but total. If perhaps you find that you have several codes that are similar and you're not sure exactly which one to pull then that's when you make sure you definitely match up these important words here but you also want to come into the case in here and see if there's something a little bit more specific to the codes that you're that you're viewing to assure that you match the proper code. You search five up and you search five below and that's you know pretty much how you um, play process of elimination with that. Okay so our modifier it happened on the left side of the body and that's it. So that's my fifth and final one. Um, if you have any further questions or if something is not clear then please comment below and I will um, reply to you or you can email me or give me a call. Thank you for watching. Have a great week.